All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right in these times that rare. Now, today, I want to discuss about sticking to God's plan. You know, a lot of times we have different goals and intentions, and we always have our, our, our eyes and our hearts set on things that may be according to God's will, God's plan, or our own desires and our own ambition. But a lot of times in our life, we have to put away our own will just for the sake of God's will, right? We truly have to always realize what's really God's plan for my life and what isn't. And sometimes we try to make things out of our own doing God's plan. And we'll be like, hey, God, can um, make can you make this happen for me, this, this, that, and the other? Or you try to force things. You try to make things that's not meant to be meant to be, right? But no matter what, you have to always put God first. You have to always ask, Father, what is your will? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? What shall I do while I'm here? Those that's according to God's plan. That's always sticking to God's. Um, that's always going to God's counsel, and always seeking Him, and always wanting to put Him first in all areas of your lives. Because we have this this free will. We have this ambition and willpower of wanting to do things our way all the time. In a lot of cases, we can't get our way all the time. That's just not how life works, right? Everything is situational. Things deal with circumstances and outcomes and also how things play out right that's why we should always put god first not ourselves first because a lot of times when we put ourselves first it feels good in the beginning but the outcome isn't that great or we still end up not satisfied out of doing our own thing right so you always want to stick to god's plan like what is god's plan for your life what does god want you to do in the moment that you're right now what does god want you doing in the future in the long term God may want you to travel to certain places. God may want you to get out your comfort zone. God may want to use you and fulfill a lot of things through you. God may want to use you to help so much different people. You have to figure out your purpose in God. You have to figure out your plans in God. You have to figure out um, which path do you want to take, which route do you want to go. Letting God guide your step, letting God guide your feet, that's everything. That's very important. I think we need to get back to the basics of just sticking to God's plan. Because a lot of times we have all these different intentions and different ideas that's not according to God's will. So everything that we do it must always be centered around the kingdom of heaven. And it always must be centered around God, God's will. It shouldn't be centered around validation or trying to prove a point to people or trying to impress people or just chasing, you know, meaningless things, you know, chasing, ch- chasing the wind, right? We're supposed to be chasing God, not chasing the wind. So what I want to do is just basically tell you to whatever your little intentions and plans you little had, just get rid of that and just get into God's plan and build your relationship with God much better and stronger, all right? So what I want to do is read some scriptures about God's plan and just go from there. Okay, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you, to give you a future and a hope. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 21. Many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 9. The mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. The book of Psalm 54, verse 5. He will recompense the evil to my foes. Destroy them in your faithfulness. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 23. This man, delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. The book of Job, chapter 42, verse 2. I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 1. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The book of Psalm 40, verse 5. Many, O Lord, my God, are the wonders which you have done and your thoughts towards us. There is none to compare with you. If I would declare and speak of them, they would be too numerous to count. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 11, verse 18. Moreover, the Lord made it known to me, and I knew it. Then you showed me their deeds. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. I love the scripture so much, I want to repeat it. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, 
to those who are called according to his purpose. The book of Job, chapter 36, verse 26. Behold, God is exalted and we do not know him. The number of his years is unsearchable. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 17. And I saw every work of God. I concluded that man cannot discover the work which has been done under the sun. Even though man should seek laboriously, he will not discover. And though the wise man should say, I know, he cannot discover. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 11. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 40, because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. The book of Psalm 18, verse 30, as for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10, with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness at time of the times, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth in him. The book of Psalm 21 verse 11, though they intended evil against you and devised a plot, they will not succeed. The book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 4, the Lord has made everything for its own purpose even the wicked for the day of evil. The book of James chapter 4 verse 13. Come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. Also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will. The book of Psalm 94 verse 11. The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are a mere breath. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things have not been done, saying, my purpose will be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 15, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. The book of Psalm 140, verse 8. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not promote his evil device, that they not be exalted. Selah. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. The book of Acts chapter 4, verse 28, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, who has served us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted in us, granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 27. To whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 10. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 30. There is no wisdom and no understanding and no counsel against the Lord. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 32. But for all this, you did not trust the Lord your God. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 17. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. But the righteous man shall live by faith. The book of Job, chapter 11, verse 7. Can you discover the depths of God? Can you discover the limits of the Almighty? The book of John, chapter 1, verse 13. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 9. And to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery, which for ages has been hidden in God, who created all things. The book of Psalm 33, verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart from generation to generation. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 7. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. 
The book of Jeremiah, chapter 26, verse 13. Now therefore amend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will change his mind about the misfortune which he has pronounced against you. The book of Psalm 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. The book of Psalm 106, verse 13. They quickly forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 12. But they will say, it's hopeless, for we are going to follow our own plans, and each of us will act according to the stubbornness of his evil heart. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 17. For God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose, and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of God will be fulfilled. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 20. For as many as are the promises of God in him, they are yes. Therefore, also through him is our amen, amen to the glory of God through us. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 29. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 15. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, then all of us returned to the wall, each one to his own work. So as you can see, God's plan is important. That's why we should stick to it. We have to know our calling, our purpose, our identity of Christ. We have to know what God has put us on earth to do, and that's to serve him, that's to glorify him. You know, we have to have that salvation. We have to do his will. We got to seek, you got to work hard towards going into the eternal life, going into heaven. You know, we want to work hard towards heaven. We got to win these souls out here. Okay, we got to help a lot of brokenhearted people, help God, help Christ, you know. We got to reach these troubled souls. We got to reach these lost people. That's God's plan for us. God is using us to help other people out there that don't believe in him all the way through, right? We have to help and save these lost, broken people. There's so much lost, broken, traumatized people out here that God put us on earth to help and save, okay? We have to remember that we're in this world, but not of it, all right? And, that, you know, we got to keep having faith in God. You know, he has a future for us, so we have to go out and live it and fulfill it right now, all right? We got to get these things popping, so I just wanted to... You know, stress that to y'all, man. Stick to God's plan. I'm pretty sure you got your own little goals and ambitions and resolutions, but always put God first no matter what and stick to his plans. So I just want to remind y'all that he is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. He's the bread of life. He's the Lord, the Creator, the Son of the living God, the only begotten Son, the beloved Son, the Holy One of Israel, the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. He's the king of kings, the head of the church, the almighty, the alpha and omega, the master, the king of the Jews, the high priest, the prophet, the teacher, the Emmanuel, the advocate, the mediator, the judge, the chief cornerstone, the author and finisher of our faith, the lamb of God, the good shepherd, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the word, the fountain of living waters, the rock, the Messiah, the true vine, the branch, the bridegroom, the day spring, the shalal, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the bright and morning star, the image of the invisible God, the I am, the son of man, the carpenter, the way, the truth, and the life, the king of Israel, he is Christ. I pray to God that whoever this is much, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life for the Lord. I pray that if you were lost or not having much clarity or you're feeling confused or not having all the answers, I pray that you seek God. I pray that you have a relationship with him. I pray that you stay prayed up. And I pray that you God reveals to you what your plan is, what your purpose is, and what your calling is, all right? I'm Jarvis Case. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.